Hi, I'm Lila. I'm the project coordinator for the Humane Selfie, Life Gets Better Together, which is a project funded by the ECU, the Equality Challenge Unit. The purpose of this project is to embed LGBT lives within further education in an adult setting and develop a student-centered um, transferable model. We've been carrying out a range of activities at the college. We've had an information fair, we've had staff training, we've had faith in LGBT which was bringing in um, another protected characteristics. So we had uh, faith, religion and belief um, as well as sexual orientation and gender identity. Um, we've got a cross-college uh, competition where the students have got to select in class or individually an LGBT themed movie, write a review or um, do a podcast or a video and then the um, film reviews are going to be um, embedded within our website and people can vote for their best reviews and the winners get cinema tickets. We've also created a new course called Crafting Language which is demonstrating that you can actually have craft and curriculum content which is inclusive of LGBT. We've had a couple of training sessions with Open Barbers. The information fair was very well attended with a range of partners but students actually contributed to the fair so it was internal and external. We're going to have an equality and diversity conference on the 16th of June where we're bringing everyone together from the sector to have a look at um, our model and comment on its transferability. The response we've had has been overwhelmingly positive. Um, it's not been an issue engaging with staff or students. Um, the students focus group was very well attended and it's enabled us to build very strong links with new partners such as um, Camden LGBT Forum. It's very important that as an adult education college we are making sure that we are completely inclusive of all our learners and all prospective learners and to consider ways that we can make sure that we are more inclusive. I'm Felix and I'm from Open Barbers and we are a hairdressing salon in Finsbury Park. We're just here to talk to people and let people know that we're here. My name is Samuel Gannon and I work for Ahmed Rahman Car Solicitors. So all of this is to do with sexual health and some of our different services that we offer, including um, THT Direct, which is free sexual health telephone service, our online HIV services, and also just some general information around sexual health services within London. My name's Nigel Harris and I'm Director of Camden LGBT Forum. And we're here to support the Working Men's College. Uh, we started a good relationship with Lila and her team here and we're helping them out with some of the courses and student groups they're putting together. What I hope for is that LGBT people right across London get to hear that Working Men's College is a really great place to come and learn where they will feel totally welcome and included. How do you think the college could be more inclusive LGBT people? I think this is probably a good way talking about it, educating people. A lot more of open days and forums should be created outside of London outside of England and just roll it round the planet. This year as part of LGBT History Month the library is helping to promote uh, gay history. In my opinion don't have for uh, discrimination. Well I actually I think the college is inclusive of LGBT people. I think there are quite a few LGBT staff. I asked the students to become involved in part of the LGBT event, which meant that they had to um, research LGBT, something they'd never done, um, looking at discrimination, religion, culture, and a lot of positive stuff about LGBT. We worked in two groups, um, one covered religion and we covered history. Um, mainly it was all on online searching and we had a lot of discussion in class that brought up a few things that people didn't, um, you wouldn't have thought of. This is good. I wish we had it uh, five or six years ago. Recognize um, uh, LGBT people's need and uh, 
hear their voice. For me, no problem, yeah, these people. In this college, um, I, don't, I don't find difference with the people uh, LGBT. I wouldn't find that they could be more helpful. Making sure that we constantly strive to do better and better and treating everybody fairly and equally. I love to study at this college because the college gives equal opportunity. I hope that during the course of today people have time to stop and think about some of the issues that are raised by this, that we have lots of feedback from people and that we add to this to hopefully continue the success of this project which will then be disseminated to other educational providers and hopefully will be a showcase for good things going forwards. If there are issues of um, discrimination, the college tries to deal with it. College, big help. I am first time come talking problem and no confidence, but today I am confident in talking English and I am happy. Thank you. We have Dr. Ruzi Jaspal, who is going to give us a talk here today, and his studies focus on Muslim, Hindu, and Sikh perspectives. We have Surat Shan Rathgiba Kanam, who will be covering Jewish perspectives. We have Reverend Dr. Bernard J. Lynch, who is covering Christian perspectives. And we also have Kieran McChrystal, who's going to be talking about his own Buddhist experiences. Men who are British South Asian, who are of religious faith, and who also identify as gay. The challenges of these identities that sometimes can seem to be in conflict. There's no such thing as Judaism, so um, I can't say I'm, I'm representing Judaism today. I'm representing actually liberal Judaism, so if you would say that as a kind of compare it to political parties, it would be like we're sort of between the Greens and the Lib Dem, <laughs> somewhere there, okay, and then the reform movement also sort of Lib Dem going into Labour, and then you have the Orthodox would be, be like the Tories, and then you have the ultra-Orthodox um, Hasidic community, which would be UKIP. <laughs> I do believe that all religion is the denial of God. I believe love alone matters. I think we all agree that homophobia is so insidious and it had gripped my life from an early age, leaving me feeling very self-conscious. And because of this, when I started to chant at 23, I began to do something that some people may understand, but some people might find abhorrent, but it kind of changed my life. Same-sex practices have occurred and continue to occur in Islamic societies, and they may be condoned in some societies, tolerated, just not talked about very much. So somewhere in my sort of young naivety and ignorance was a belief that my frustrations in life and my sort of anguish about being different and self-conscious could be solved if I wasn't gay. Faith continues to be of importance to many of the people I have interacted with and spoken to. They don't want to let go of their cultural identities. They want to continue to be accepted in these groups, but they also want to be able to recognize themselves and publicly their sexual identities. Love never dies. And that's all I know about life after death. Without LGBTQI people sharing their own stories, they get deleted or they get omitted. So this is a really, really important event, I think. Crafting Language was a six-week course um, looking at LGBT history and activism and also looking at a thing called craftivism and working with craft. So that's working with students with a variety of craft to introduce them to the idea that they can work with craft and also work with content to make a personal project um, about something really important to them. 
We've looked specifically at LGBT history since the Stonewall riots in New York. Um, looking at different movements of LGBT activism and things that have happened to work towards equal rights for LGBT people. And in tandem with that, we've been learning applique, cross stitch and embroidery. They've had a taster session of each and then they've, for the last three weeks, they've been working on their own project. It's been a really great course. They've all been really enthusiastic. They've been interested in the history. They've been impatient to be doing the craft um, and what's happened is over the course of the six weeks they've sort of been drawing a bit on the stuff that I've introduced them to with regards LGBT history but bringing more personal political things into the session so often with craft courses it's about the technique and it's about it being quite decorative and the thing that makes this course different is that I've been encouraging them and asking them to use something that has a content. So working with crafts to make something that says something that has an important meaning to them. Um, and that is very much in line with the craftivist movement, which is about making craft items, making protest banners, making small protest banners, making big protest banners. Um, and also sometimes making things that look quite decorative and beautiful. They can be quite small, but then they, they say something quite strong as well. And the students, they've all become quite enthused and they, some of them have said they've been quite inspired and they've taken materials away to work more on other projects. So yeah, it's been really nice and it's worked really nicely as a group um, session where people can get together each week and talk about quite interesting things whilst they make work. My role in Camden as Director of Camden LGBT Forum is to support all of our LGBT visitors, students, residents. So in Camden uh, we did the Moving Community Centre which was going around education establishments, businesses, colleges and turning some of the spaces LGBT to see what would happen, to see what groups would form. And um, it's absolutely amazing to see what the Working Men's College have done you know, in a short space of time. This kind of event is, uh, I think, kind of perfect as it allows people, you know, see see what's going on. What is LGBT? People, if they said this four letters, some people have no idea. We want to understand this uh, so society. It's important for you to have this space. Yeah, it's just like us. Last week, many of you will have filled in a questionnaire. Mm -hmm. For the first time ever, we introduced some questions about people's sexuality. Why that can be important is to see if your um, doors are open. I've been to colleges where they've started to monitor and they realise that they're so much better than they thought they were. They've got loads of LGBT students. So then we can go on to the next level of what do they all feel safe and included, etc. Then they can feel they are self, they are free. For LGBT History Month, we've been working in conjunction with Open Barbers. Open Barbers delivered a customer service training day for staff and students. As a result of the training, we have incorporated a genderless price list and we welcome and are inclusive for all clients from all walks of life, backgrounds, religious beliefs, sex or gender. Open Barber's trainers has given our staff a great insight into the many issues and complex areas around LGBT client users. Our students have developed a really good understanding and awareness of the importance of correctly dealing with LGBT customers. 
The impact on our students has been very positive. It has raised a very important awareness on dealing with LGBT customers and service users. Currently, the hairdressing and barbering qualifications are very gender specific and orientated and hopefully with this training we will raise the awareness that it's very important that we are being genderless. Qualifications should be unisex qualifications. Cutting techniques uh, used to perform whether barbering services are the same whether it's performed on a man or a woman. So as long as the techniques performed, I think that's the most important factor and there shouldn't be too much emphasis on whether it's done on a male or a female. The focus today is on LGBT, everybody familiar with LGBT? The objectives for today, the first one is to identify discriminatory behaviour in relation to sexual orientation and gender identity and its impact on the people concerned, to reflect on your own practice of challenging discrimination and it's something that you can use at the college and in your life as well, it's not just here. And then identify three to five strategies to challenge discriminatory behaviour. Some of the things that we're going to be talking about is going to be quite sensitive. Please keep an open mind. If you disagree with anyone, uh, challenge the view, not the person. Yes, very good. How many people got it? I think you all got it. Negativity towards lesbians. Any of these terms new to anyone? I want to see how, to, because I, I want to learn from your experience and I'm sure that we can all share from the way we challenge discrimination. So the next four groups is very confident at challenging homophobia, transphobia. What does it look like? What does it look like? Discriminatory behaviour. Insults. Okay. Yeah, so insults and swear words. Okay. What else have we got, Irina? Um, excluding people. From a particular activity. Yeah, yeah, so ostracizing, excluding, yeah. What would you do? A student makes homophobic remark in the canteen or in the library. So the objectives for this session was about identifying discriminatory behaviour in relation to sexual orientation and gender identity and its impact. Did you feel we've achieved that? Uh, reflect on your own practice of challenging discrimination. Did you have a chance to think about how you do it? Have you identified a few more strategies that you can use? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to reflect on your table to say what have you gained from this session? What did you learn? What was new to you? What are you going to do differently now? Hello, um, I'm Irina Stanova, I'm Head of Student Support at WMC, the Camden College. Today we're holding a national conference to disseminate the findings of our special project, LGBT inclusion project, the Humane Selfie. We've invited colleagues from um, various colleges and other organisations, uh, specially designated institutions, to come in and tell us what they think of our project, the way we run it, how they will um, use our findings into their own institutions. Today is a really good example of how lots and lots of really good ideas 
can be shared amongst a lot of people and then spread quite a lot further. So not only does the uh, Working Men's College gain from the work that's been done, but also other people that are here and some of the things that they can take. Some of the specific examples that I really, really enjoyed is the, the sort of the staff training. I think that's really incredible stuff, really looking at how to kind of challenge ideas that can be very difficult to some people. And also, we're speaking with these guys here around the, the work that they've been doing and the training they've been doing and how to really kind of improve in things around customer service, which is, which is an area that a lot of paid people are interested in. A lot of people are interested in customer services. So by helping improve that area, you can really kind of spread some of the messages that, uh, and some of the work that's been done. So that's fantastic. The feedback, the feedback from our colleagues today has been extremely positive. Um, we're hoping they're learning a lot and they're telling us they're learning a lot. They're telling us that um, some of the activities we ran they're going to use um, in their organisations but also what we are finding is that we are learning a lot from them especially in the areas where we fail to reach um, the amount of uh, inclusion we were hoping to and um, we're looking at ways of improving our practice in future so they're giving us tips to say out of all the places I've worked as a consultant this is probably one of the most inclusive workplace I've ever had the privilege of working really because when I do my END training usually some people um, I've come across people who are not even familiar with the Equality Act 2010 so it's like all right let's step back and have a look whereas here it was more like oh we're really interested um, how can we do it you know there was a genuine interest and a lot of staff support really um, from allies uh, it's been extremely important to have the focus uh, that this project has given us. This is obviously uh, a long established college. We've got 160 years of history, which is really important to us, but as important, even more important, is moving forward, looking at new opportunities, looking at new students who can come to us, and looking at how we can best work within what is a di diminishing funding pot, but looking at what we can do going forward. I really also enjoyed the curriculum, the inclusive curriculum, I think. As was mentioned there, so, as well as a simply sort of an educational course, it's a way of getting people together, people exploring issues beyond what might be uh, just the, the, the core of the course. I think that's really, really important. The level of partnership working as well has been fantastic and how getting everybody together really helps kind of with all these things like the advertising, recruiting people to the courses, recruiting people to staff training, uh, spreading the messages, I think it's really, really important and this project's obviously fantastic at that. It sounds like the staff here are really, really fantastic and really open and really open to ideas and kind of challenging their own uh, beliefs or prejudices and really opening things up to everyone. So I think that's helped perhaps give an environment for this work to kind of really get embedded. So it's fantastic and it's been a really good morning. Our next step is to look at that model, first of all improve on it, um, and also take the model and apply it to different equality strands because what we've done can be used across the board and we can expand on it, we can train more teachers, we can uh, raise student awareness on any quality strand. So we know that um, the work has, has been done with an aim to keep it sustainable. It was never a let's do a year and then see what happens. So that's really important when creating a partnership work. It's not just something for the immediate future. How do you then embed that system in place? to get an LGBT liaison officer to actually assign your college as one of their official venues. I think obviously we've been talking for a long time over here um, and I think for us today was um, a big um, part of why we've come um, and I think that we've all found it very useful talking to both of you. Um, I think you've opened up our minds about 
you know, some of the problems that we would probably have with our students. So, um, and I think I will speak on behalf of all of the team that we would like to sort of, sort of go through that a lot more with you and, and continue to network and to uh, live with this with our students. So, I found that really useful and this, this pack is really, really good for us. I'm very pleased that the day, the day has been very successful and people are learning a lot. They've come in with ideas, they've come in with a lot of questions and hopefully they will have found um, answers to their questions by the end of the day. We're hoping to inspire colleagues um, across the UK to run similar events and to make their organisations um, more inclusive, like we have made ours.